Hey YouTube, Captain Mark here from Kings Landing Sport Fishing. Today's video is about one of my favorite tactics to fish for salmon, and that's using anchovy hole baits and an anchovy teaser head like these. Now before I get into the video though, I need a big favor from you. If you can like and subscribe to this video, it really helps me as an amateur YouTube provider. Appreciate that. Let's get into the video now. So what do you need? First of all, you need your teaser head. What I've got here today is I've got a glow teaser head that I'm going to use to rig up. Second, you need a good quality fluorocarbon line. I've got right here, I've got some Seaguar, 30 pound. You can use 30 or 40 pound Seaguar. I personally use 30, I think it's enough and I like fluorocarbon because fishing the Great Lakes, our water is much clearer than when I used to fish the Pacific Ocean for salmon. So I find the fluorocarbon works really, really well. You also need a high quality ball chain swivel. This is a six ball. Big fan of the six balls. All I use when I'm running anchovy. Now, if you can't get a six ball swivel, you can get away with a regular with a ball bearing swivel like this, but you got to make sure it's a really high quality ball bearing swivel, uh, not a not a cheap one or not a barrel swivel. It's got to be a ball bearing swivel. But like I said, first choice, barrel swivel. Six ball all the time. What do you need for hooks? I'm going to do a demo today showing you how to rig this with a 4 aught stinger, octopus style hook, and a size 2 treble hook. And they're going to be run like that. That being said, you can also do these rigs, and I've got one tied up here. You can also do these rigs with twin 4 aught octopus as well. Uh, the method I use today, while tying it up, will work just as well. You'll just substitute out the uh, treble for a second 4 aught octopus hook. So, oh, and before I forget, you also need, very, very important for a salmon fisherman, you need toothpicks. So there's two styles of toothpicks. There's flats and then there's a regular round. Myself, personally, I'm all about the flat toothpicks. That's what I prefer when I'm doing an anchovy head or actually running a herring meat strip. I much prefer the flats. So let's get started. Take your fluorocarbon. I like to start off with about eight and a half to nine feet length of fluorocarbon. So I pull it out. I know my span's about five and a half. So I do my span on the bit and that's good enough. So I've got my fluorocarbon. I can set that aside now. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to tie on the four rod. This is what we call a stinger hook. And I'm going to run that through and I'm going to run that through the hook like that, the line. And then I'm going to tie what's called a bait loop or an egg loop knot. I'm going to wrap this round six times. And then once I've wrapped it around six times, I'm going to get the other end of the, uh, of the line. And I'm going to run that through the eyelet. Now what you'll notice when you're doing this, this knot, you wish you have a lot more hands. Two is just not enough. And that's where your mouth comes in handy. But what you'll see is I'm going to run that through like so. And then I'm going to wrap it another six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now what I will do to make life easier for you. I will put a description, a link, sorry, in the description that will help you, uh, with a tutorial on the bait loop knot. There's lots of uh, there's lots of good images or websites on how to tie knots on the internet, and I'll put a link to one of my favorite ones to give you a bit of a tip on how to tie this knot. So there you go. I've got the first knot on there, first hook on there with that bait loop knot, nice and tight, ready to go. Now what I can do is I can t I can snip this tag end. Don't need that on there. There you go. Nice and neat. So now we're going to add our treble. So get to the end of the line again. Take your, take your size two treble. Put the line through. And you want to bring that all the way down to that four aught octopus. Now what I like to do is I like to have about an inch of space between the two. 
So that's about an inch right there. And then I'm going to do that same bait loop or egg loop, loop lot. So I'm going to write it, wrap it twice, three, four, five, six. Hold that. And then similar to last time, I'm going to get to the end, run that, put that end back through the eyelet. I'm going to wrap it another six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now simulate. Got to wet that line. And then this one, I'd say you got to be slowly, you got to slowly pull it through. That is only the downside. You're running a relatively long lead here. So you've got a lot of line to pull through. But if you take your time, you'll get it and it'll be nice. You'll get a nice clean knot. Like so. And then cinch that down. And now you'll see we've got our, our knot on the treble and our bait loop knot on the octopus. And there's about an inch of distance between the two of them. Now, now we've got to add the teaser head. So this is where I've got my trusty glow teaser head. And what I'm going to do to make life easier, I'm going to clip, I'm going to switch cameras right now to show you. So what you can see, there's my teaser head and there's a series of holes on it. And on the back of the teaser head, there's this little like tube or tunnel. And that's the first thing we do. We got to take the end of the line and we're going to put it through this hole. See, that is through that hole right there. Now, you'll notice there's another hole. It's like a, it's almost like an oval hole next to it. Now we take that line and we thread that through the oval hole. And you'll see, I've threaded it through and it's come back out. Now, there is this hole right here. That is the hole we want to get this line through. But we've got to come through the inside. So now we're going to take this, we're going to take this and we're going to thread it through. This takes a moment, and as you can see, there you go. We've got that through. Now we're going to pull that all the way to the end. I pull it all the way to the end here, and as you can see, now I've got my anchovy teaser head on the line with a treble and the single forat octopus hook. And we're almost done. Now, we gotta add that swivel. So let's just talk leader lengths for a quick second. I start out with like eight and a half, nine feet because I find you lose about two feet of uh, leader length uh, just doing all your knots and such. Uh, you know, between your knot, your bait loop knot on the first hook, your bait loop knot on the second hook, and then doing your favorite knot that you used to attach your swivel. I personally like the uni knot, so that's the knot I'm going to use. Now, what leader lengths do I recommend? If you're running a large flasher, such as, you know, I've got a, I've got an Oki Kingfisher here, or I've got a Dreamweaver uh, Bigfoot. If you're running a large flasher like this, like basically, I would run seven and a half foot lead. And I would just be tying on a that ball swivel right away. Now, if I was running a smaller flasher, I've got a Pro Troll here, Pro Troll 8 inch or, you know, Spin Doctor 8 inch here, I would run probably a six, six and a half foot max leader lens. So let's just tie this up today for a large flasher, which means I'm just going to tie that swivel right on the end. And like I said, I like to use the uni knot, it's super simple, loop it back over, wrap it through about six or seven times, and it's super strong. Tip, always make sure your fishing line is lubricated when you're doing the knots, especially with fluorocarbon. You don't want to, you know, burn or damage that fluorocarbon. So now we've got our rig tied up with a swivel on the end. So now let's just attach that to our flasher. So 
You know, got my Oki Kingfisher here. And we're good. We're ready to the fish, aren't we? But we're missing one thing. We're missing the actual fish. And I'm going to show you how to actually attach the fish and create the roll you need. So, first thing I got to do, take out the pin. We don't need the pin right now. We won't get the fish in if we got the pin in. So set the pin down. We're going to need that in a moment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bait fish. So I've got some, uh, I got some fish here that's been uh, brining for a couple of days. There you go. I got my fish. I'm going to jam that in there, in the head. And then I'm going to take that pin and I'm going to put that through the fish. As you can see, we now have that pin holding the fish. Now, this is where I'm going to take my treble here. And I don't have the toothpick in yet. I'll show you where the toothpick goes in a second. I'm going to take the treble hook. And behind the fin, in the middle of the fish here, I'm going to set the treble in. So it's all the way in, and then spin it around. Now, you can see, there you go. There's the fish with the hook in. And that why I, why I use about an inch on the stinger hook. You can see it's right at the end of the tail. Now, this is where your toothpick comes into play. Got my toothpick. Now I take my toothpick and I jam it in that hole, that that first tube hole. Because what the toothpick does, it creates tension. Let me flip the camera over again here so you can see. So what the toothpick does right there, as you can see, it's created tension. Now right now I don't have a curve on this fish. I'm going to have to create that curve in a second. But before I do anything, I'm going to break that toothpick off. I've got enough. Ten I've got the tension I need. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull. And what you'll see is as I start pulling, I start creating a curve on that fish. So flip back, you can see now this fish has got a curve to it. And you can set that curve how you want it. And by setting this curve like that, this will give me a nice spiral roll behind that flasher. And that, my friends, is how I not only tie up, but also fish with an anchovy rig behind whether it be a kingfisher flasher or a regular 8-inch flasher. It's a really, really deadly and effect effective method of fishing. Hope you found this useful. Like I said, if you can, please like and subscribe to this video. It helps a guy like me that's producing these videos for YouTube. Thanks so much. Have a great day in the water and a solid 2021. Talk to you later.